Well, despite failing to win the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich have just renewed Jurgen Klopp's contract until 2033, so we're not going there. Hello everyone and welcome back to more Careering Onwards with me, Mr. Grant 2 here with, still Liverpool for now, but mainly today, the focus Brazil, the Brazilian national side here in the World Cup 2030 in Italy, Italia, Italia 2030, or just Italia 30, as it may well be. Yes, it's the World Cup, always a special occasion. We are, of course, the holder of the World Cup as a manager, the World Cup holding manager, as we won last time with France concluding a, well, a trio, a trilogy of World Cup victories for France, including their one in Russia in real life in 2018, which means that France are the holders, they are the three times holders, and it's going to be difficult for us to stop them. Brazil, of course, still the most successful side. France now on four World Cups, Brazil on five, but they haven't won it since 2002, so it's going to be a little bit, uh, it's going to be a challenge for us to do it this time, and we certainly need to try because the well, the, the Brazilian FA want us to reach the final. And the only reason I took the Brazil job is because I want to win the Copa America. And if we get sacked now, that's going to be difficult. And of course, within all this, we have also got to think about job stuff. Um, yeah, um, there's, there's, well, these are the vacancies at the moment. As you can see, I have applied for the Zebra Juventus job because, well, they aren't, they did qualify for the Champions League. They are a very good team. Um, overall, obviously a historic team, lots of reputation. What I like about them is the fact they haven't won the league for, for, for five years now. The last time they won the league was in 2024-2025, so actually a chance to rebuild a formerly dominant side, rebuild a fallen giant. We will see what happens with that. I'm not going to accept the job, I've not had an interview, but I'm not going to accept the job until after the World Cup final, if we can, because I want to see what other jobs become available, because with you know with international managers being sacked, we will have to see with that. But anyway, that will be most likely next time. We have got a World Cup to play, first of all. Today we're going to be doing the group stage and hopefully the first, maybe first two knockout rounds, depending on how things go. Hopefully we get that far, at least. Um, just the goals from the first two games. Our group stage is against, we're going to be playing Angola, first of all, and then Switzerland should probably progress from that one. And then we'll do the full games for the other the knockout games. But anyway, right, the World Cup has kicked off. We're pretty late to kick off. Um, so far, not really any real shock results. We'll go through these and just sort of pick out any familiar faces, familiar names. I mean, there's a few people already. Ansi Fatty, for example. Any any of our boys from Liverpool or indeed our former club, uh, Leicester or Borussia Mönchengladbach, getting on the score sheet. I don't think anyone from Cambridge is here. But there might be some other people from other nations. Doesn't look like it. Well, Nico Elvedi, there we go. He scored for Switzerland in their win against Angola, which is nice. And uh, then going through, Scotland did unfortunately lose their first game to to, uh, to Nigeria. Colin Nicholson, of course, on the score sheet, though. Argentina thrashing poor Syria 7-0. The host getting off to a winning start, as well in our former charges, France beating Mali 2-0. William Salabar and the, well, much maligned Seiko Sissoko scoring for them. Sinchek also scoring a brace for Croatia, which you love to see. But it is now our turn to play. Now we are going to be playing Angola first of all. And this is the team that is not going to be playing Angola because this is our strongest team. And frankly, we should be able to beat Angola pretty easily. So we were playing the second 11 in the game. But we'll, we'll use this opportunity. We'll talk through the squad because there's a few familiar names in here. Um, but there are quite a lot of regens and they are really quite good. Now we'll get to know them as the tournament goes on. But so we'll go through it just as quick as possible. Goalkeepers. We've got three of the best goalkeepers in the world really. Uh, Victor uh, Guilherme, he's at Real Madrid, he's very good. Um, and these two boys, I've well, considered signing, but they were too expensive before we signed Marcus Dewhurst, and really, that was a good idea, because he was brilliant. And we've got Eduardo, who is frankly nuts in a lot of ways. 19 handling and 19 one-on-ones, as well as 17 reflexes. And then Leandro Aplicedo, uh, who's at Porto, probably... Well, he's in, st in terms of star rating, it's kind of very flexible about who the best one is. I'm going to go with this guy because he's impressed me the most overall. I'm not quite as good as Eduardo, and he's got the lowest star rating actually. But I do think he's possibly the best. That might end up going going horribly wrong, but that's what I'm going to go with. Into the defence, then quite a few uh, real players or players that we are at least familiar with. At left back, we have got uh, Wagner, who is slightly better going forwards 
than the backup, which is Rafinha, a player we're very familiar with, of course, a, a stalwart of our Liverpool side. Edo Militao is still at right back. Um, he's more normally a centre back, really, I suppose, but he's 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 a right back in this one. Still very physically good. Uh, in the defence, we've got some pretty decent centre backs. Morata Morato is a real player. He's at Chelsea. Looks pretty good. Uh, we've got Eduardo Paulo as well. And then the backups in that position are we've got uh, Albanaz. He's at Juventus, and we have got Fernando. He's at Monaco. So I mean, we've got some pretty established players in, in some big clubs midfield uh, we have got Marcus Antonio real player he's at Bayern Munich um, we've also got uh, Roberto Corte he's at Barcelona very good and Lucas Paqueta is going to get the start because like I say he starts for Liverpool starts for me at Liverpool he can start for Brazil as well other midfielders we've got Bibi who I nearly have signed at Liverpool he looks really good I didn't call up Pedro which I kind of feel a little bit bad about Arthur he's still here having a wonderful time of day he's at Barcelona still looks very good indeed and then the other midfield who is who's our other midfield oh yes uh, Rainier who is at Real Madrid in real life I recently joined them he's now at Manchester City he's pretty good he probably should start ahead of Lucas Piqueta but I've got a lot of loyalty for for old Lucas on the wings some familiar names Rodrigo of course real player he's at PSG blooming good uh, Barantina He's on the left-hand side. Familiar foe for us throughout the save. Was at Benfica. Now he's at Real Madrid. Very good indeed. We've still got Vinicius Jr. in the side. Looks really good. I forgot to call up Cal Jorge. Cayo Jorge, or however you say it. He's not here. Instead, we have got this guy, Lucio Flavio Cancio. He is at Monaco. Looks very good. He's mostly a striker. But in, in, in a similar way that... Um, Colin Nicholson was being played as a winger and was clearly much better suited as a striker. I think this guy is better suited as a winger. Um, so he's going to be playing there for us. And in terms of strikers, we have got up front for us in the main team, Leandrinho, who's about to join Spurs. Um, I would sign him with Liverpool if I was A, staying in B. We didn't have the three best strikers in the world. Uh, or, well, certainly two. Um, we don't really need him, but he's very good and he will be starting for us. And our backup striker will be Thiago Danny, a familiar face in the save. He's at Spurs as well, so they're going to have our first and second choice strikers. I We've not got Gabriel Jesus. I don't think I called him up. No, he just missed out. It's a little bit, little bit unfortunate for him, but I think that is the whole squad. And this is the team that will not be playing. They'll be playing against Switzerland. We will go to the second 11, which is the players who got a cursory look. There they are. And I will bring you, hopefully, the goals that they are now able to score. And I was hopeful for a bit of a goal fest. It is looking like it's going to be that way. Thiago Danny sliding in for the first goal for us of the tournament. Obviously, yeah, this is the second 11. So we can get a good result from them. Then uh, that's only going to bode well. And now 2-0. Arthur coolly converting from the penalty spot. He is having a wonderful time of day. And it's 3-0. Arthur's free kick is headed in by Albanaz. I think we've I think we've got three points on the board already. I mean, it should be about 20-0, the amount of chances we've had that have just been really easily missed. But it is it is finally four. Vinicius Jr. stealing in for his first goal of the campaign. And there we go. About as routine as you would expect. 12 shots on target, four goals. I guess that's not too bad considering these boys will not be playing in the main games. Right, then with that, we have actually already qualified for the next round. But we do need to beat Switzerland so that we can... We can win the group. Other results since last time. Trent Alexander-Arnold scoring as England beat Senegal. England, of course, one of the other major threats. They are the European champions, winning Euro 2028, defeating our France side in the final. Germany winning 5-0, but no goal for Marco Vujovic as of yet. Venezuela, shocking everywhere. They've beaten Ivory Coast, and they, they are, I think they're through to the next round. I mean, remember when we were in charge of them and they were so bad, but not anymore. The hosts winning again. They're going through. Um, Argentina winning as well with two will draw for Norway. That's a bit of a bit well, I don't know. Um, Holland seems a bit, bit, bit resurgent. They're beating Chile. The big shock, though, is that France can only draw 1 1 with Canada. Kylian Mbappe rescuing them, well, in the, in the 39th minute and then doing nothing with it. And Jamaica have beaten Croatia 1 0. Spain also drawing with Uruguay. Now, I think most of those teams will, will safely make it through. Irregardless, we'll have a look at the group stage once this game is done. We're going to go with the with the well preferred first eleven. We'll see how well they do compare the two in this game against Switzerland. Definitely some familiar faces in this one: uh, Denis Sakaria and Nico Elvedi, of course, 
former players for us at Borussia Munchen, Gladbach, Okafor, Ricardo Rodriguez, Makamo, Mamal Akanji, uh, Godot in goal is a He's another one of the very good goalkeepers around the world now at Barcelona. Um, how old is Ricardo? He's 37. He's got pace of seven. This is going to be going to be interesting. All right, I'll bring you the goals, and there may well be a few with Ricardo Rodriguez at left back. Focus play down the right. Right, already Rodriguez absolutely destroying Ricardo Rodriguez. He cannot keep up with him at all. Great run from Rodrigo, beating his man. And Leandrinho opens his Brazil account, well, for the campaign. He's called him one of the friendlies, actually, so it's not his first ever Brazil goal. But he was uncapped before the start, the, before the uh, before the friendlies, before the tournament. And we've got our second penalty of the tournament. Corte easily dispatching this one, and it's looking like a you know pretty trouble-free Brazil qualification as group winners for the next round. We are playing some pretty good stuff here. Edmil Tau involved in this one, and then Roberto Corte gets his second of the game. Lovely strike. 3-0, and we're looking pretty good at this very early stage. And there we go, 3-0, job done. I need, to, I need to practice the Brazilian national anthem. It's a bit of a bit of a tricky one to get your head around. Okay, what, so Ed, Eduardo Paulo in that game, he's got a damaged shoulder. I took him off as soon as he got the injury. Apparently, he will be out for two weeks and will miss the rest of the tournament. I mean, what? Is he not in the team? Or is it, cause, because that's not the rest of the tournament, is it? Please tell me he is actually still here. He is still here. Good. Because, yeah, he's he's not going to miss the rest of the tournament if it's two weeks. The tournament's a month long. All right, Germany crushed Saudi Arabia 7-0. Still no goal for Marco Vujovic in that one. England wins 6-0 in their game. They're looking very good. Salvador scores for Portugal as they beat Australia. And uh, then the final round of group stage matches are there. Scotland winning 3-0. Lovely to see that Russell Thompson scoring for them. Venezuela losing. Mexico beating Belgium 3-1. Okay, well, our, our second round opponent is going to be Australia. That has now been drawn. And we'll take a look at the... Well, actually, let's just let's just take a look at the old groups first, see if anyone did get knocked out, anyone big. Uh, Honduras, Costa Rica, Syria, Ecuador, Burkina Faso, Mali, Uzbekistan, Gabon, Saudi Arabia. Why there's so many groups? Iran, Gambia, Angola... Sweden, probably the biggest name, but that's actually quite a tricky group, actually, compared to pretty much everything else. New Zealand have gone, Algeria, and the Ivory Coast all knocked out as well. So the second round draws Italy, China, South Korea, Romania, Norway, Argentina, Japan, Turkey, Canada, Holland, France, Chile, Croatia, Spain, that's a pretty big one, Jamaica versus Uruguay, Senegal, Germany, Cameroon, England, a classic, Switzerland, Portugal, Brazil versus Australia, of course, Scotland will have to face Colombia, Nigeria will play America, Mexico, Venezuela, and Ukraine versus Belgium. Right, the first four second round games have been played in some big, big shocks. Turkey winning 2-0 against Japan, the hosted 3-4-1 against China, Sebastiano Esposito getting two goals for that one. That's great to see. Romania beating South Korea on penalties. Radu, of course, an excellent player for them. But the big shock, Norway have knocked out Argentina on penalties. Christopher Ayer, the only goal scorer in that one. I'm surprised there's been no goal for Erling Haaland yet. Is he is he injured? He's not he's not in the squad. Is he is he he must be injured, surely. No, he is he's at Atalanta and they have just not taken Erling Haaland with them to the World Cup. That suggests to me that their existing strikers are really, really good. Is that the case? I mean they're playing Martin Odegaard as a striker. Surely surely you should have called up Erling Haaland. Very strange. I mean, it seems to have worked for them. They've just beaten Argentina. And then Holland have beaten Canada. France, of course, going 3-3-1 against Chile. Lefebvre scored an own goal, but Mbappe got two. Croatia beating Spain. That is fantastic. Marco Sinchek getting one of the goals for Croatia. And Uruguay knocking out Jamaica. Now, that is actually potentially really interesting because, well, logically, the Spain manager will now be sacked. If I was the Spanish FA, the person I would pick would be Fernando Hierro if I if I was able to persuade him to leave Real Madrid. And if he leaves Real Madrid, then that would be lovely if we could go there. Right, we're last up in this round. Portugal have knocked out Switzerland. Germany have knocked out Senegal. Still no goal for, for, for Vujovic. England are through as well, uh, although Trent Alexander-Arnold is injured. I just got a notification of that, of course, because I am Liverpool manager. But we are playing Australia. Matt, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Managed by Robbie Fowler. Fantastic. Liverpool legend. Robbie Fowler has left Brisbane Raw and is now in charge of the national side. Right, no Eduardo Paolo because of his stupid injury that 
surely wouldn't actually really keep him up. We'll bring in Fernando, who is a more than capable replacement. We could actually make a few switches here because we're not looking fully fit, fully fresh. Antonio, maybe I think he can drop out. We'll bring in uh, bring in Arthur, and, uh, and then yeah, that that'll do. I think I might take Rodrigo out as well because and 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 Barantina because the, the wingers are sort of the most sort of active in this, and we don't want them to be getting too tired. And with respect, we should have enough about us, even with those changes, to beat Australia, even with Robbie Fowler in charge. And it is a very regen and I, I'm assuming real player, but sort of very young real player, heavy team. Uh, Lata Berdier, formerly of Manchester City in their youth team, him and uh, Bongiorno are the only real players in the in the starting lineup. There's a few others on the bench. Um, Kieran Phillips is at Everton, I believe, in real life. Oakley Booth is at is at uh, Tottenham, I think. Um, but otherwise, all the, all the sort of familiar names, the big hitters, have retired. Well, first highlight is actually Australia. I mean, we said they weren't work. Well, this is going to be pretty pretty easy. Free kick is easily claimed by uh, Apresadio, though. And uh, Wagner now running forwards into acres of space. It's a lovely ball at the top of Vinicius Junior. He cuts inside. I mean, he's he was looking for for a pass. There was no one there. He had to go alone. It didn't work out. Arthur with the resultant corner. Now Wagner's got a bruised ankle. I mean, injuries. It's just it's like the Club World Cup all over again. I mean, at least this one matters a lot more. Leandrinho finally opens the scoring. This is it's not been a particularly interesting game, but before the break, we finally get the breakthrough, and it's Leandrinho newly signed for Tottenham Hotspur. That has been confirmed. Um, he's going to be pretty good for them next season, I think, and he's been pretty good for us, rising highest. To head us into the lead. All right, half time. We've seen nothing from Australia particularly, and uh, not much from us, but we do at least have a goal looking pretty good. Um, I mean, this is this is the absolute minimum. Um, we will be sacked unless we get to. I think. I think. I think we'll be sacked unless we get to the semi-finals, um, quarter-finals. Maybe there's a chance, but anything anything earlier than that, and we will be undoubtedly sacked. And we don't want to be sacked because I want to win the Copper America. So let's. Let's just make sure we win this one pretty comfortably. Wagner has been flattened by Carlos Isaac and he is being dismissed, which has made it a lot easier for us. Coming forwards in search of a second, really, just to just, let's just kill this game off and we can start resting a few players, a few more players. Leandrino knocks it down and Lucas Paqueta, fierce shot from him, hitting the bar and going on top of the goal. Right, Wagner, I'm going to take him off because his fitness isn't great and he's getting nervous now. I'll bring on Rafinha, whose match fitness is terrible because his club manager has not been playing him very much. I wonder who that man is. I don't know. Murata plays it forward too, Rafinha. Can he can he sh show what he's all about? He, he does. He, he gives the ball away. Um, and Australia are in here. Oakley Booth goes for the shot and nearly scores. Not great from the only one of the only two Liverpool players in the in the squad, Eddie Militao has apparently suffered a pulled coin. What what is this? My defence is being culled one by one. All right, free kick from Arthur. Can we get a second, please? We do. Leandrino fires home. We're we're looking very very casual in this one. I mean, Australia haven't really offered anything, but I mean, we obviously we we've, we've taken out two of our best attacking players, give them a rest. But still, this has not been a particularly good performance. All right, I'm gonna take off. Who am I gonna? I'm gonna take off Bacato because he is, he's kind of old now, and we don't want him to be getting injured. Just on the slight chance we're still a Liverpool manager next season, we don't want him to be getting injured. But there we go, not outstanding, but it's a win, and that's the main thing. Two 0 against Australia. I just, I don't think we're gonna win the World Cup because I don't feel this team is really quite as good as as the uh, as the France squad that we had. I and the final second round games, Ukraine have knocked out a pretty sorry Belgium 3-0. Scotland making it past Colombia. Colin Nicholson on the score sheet. And Scotland are into the third round of the World Cup, which is fantastic. Nigeria have knocked out the United States. And Venezuela fall to Mexico. Two goals from Diego Lainez, giving them an extra time win. And our reward for beating Australia is Germany. Germany. Germany, four-time winners, Germany in the third round. Let's have a look at the whole thing. Italy, Turkey, Romania, Norway, Holland, Uruguay, France, Croatia, England, Portugal, Scotland, Ukraine, Nigeria, Mexico. 
I think it's safe to say that us in England have been a bit screwed there, really. I mean, this that is that's pretty pretty brutal. I do kind of back us, but then they've got Marko Vujovic. We know how good he is, although he doesn't appear to have been playing, or at least he hasn't scored at any point so far. This could be the end of our World Cup campaign, though. This may, may only be one video because yeah, we'll play the Germany game today, and then uh, then any other future games will be. Will be next time. There's some shocks already in the third round. Italy, the host nation, dumped out 1 0 by Turkey. Denise Kelik, the only goal scorer, he's not bad, he's a spell. Um, he scored Romania crushing Norway, who beat Argentina, don't forget, crushing Norway 6 1. Could be potential dark horses, Romania. Of course, they got to the semi finals of the Euros, if I remember correctly, two years ago. We beat them in the Euro, in the Euro semi final. Um, Radu is just nuts, isn't he? We could have signed him. Um, I signed Jordan Richard instead. I'm happy with my purchase. But again, I mean, Italy will surely now sack their manager, which means that that's a potential potential vacancy. Um, of course, the other potential potential Spanish manager would, would probably be Pep Guardiola back again, um, which would free up Inter Milan, which would, again would be an interesting one for us. So this is brilliant. All, all of the Liverpool staff who I'd want to take with me, um, their contracts are all expiring, so I'm going to have to give them all new contracts, which means they won't want to join me if we leave which is is fantastic, great timing. That's why I really wanted to leave last year. Um, it just, yeah, but it just, it didn't work out. Colin Nicholson and Jordan Richard and Miguel Salvador all have one year left on their deal, which is not good. Um, Colin doesn't want to sign a new deal because he's being tapped up by everyone. But I'm, I, I'm going to leave that because if we leave then we could maybe steal in and get at least one of them on the cheap. I wouldn't mind doing that. But anyway, this is this we've not we've not actually got anywhere to go yet because we've not even heard back from Juventus. Alright oh, then France are through Mbappe and Sissoko with the goals to get a narrow win over Croatia. Domagoj Badaric sent off late on and Holland, a resurgent Holland, they are through as well. England are through 2-0 against Portugal. Salvador will not be winning the World Cup. Vasquez, of course, such a deadly player with the goal, and Adam Grayson as well. And now it is the time for us. Germany versus Brazil, one of the, well, the two of the, well, the, the two of the most successful teams of the World Cup, other than France, who've come along, of course, in uh, in in the save, winning an extra two. Um, the two most successful teams in real life, a rematch of the 2002 final, of course, the semi-final, the 7-1 win for Germany in uh, in Brazil, um, it's a big one. It's a big one. It seems very unfair on both teams that this is what we've got in the third round. I mean, it's definitely the biggest game of the World Cup so far, as far as we're concerned, and probably overall as well. Right, the team then for this one, we are going to make some changes because, frankly, what we saw last time against Australia was not really good enough. We're going to have to play Rafinha because Wagner's not particularly fit, but otherwise, Barantin is going to come back in. Rodrigo is going to come back in, and we need to be as full strength as we possibly, possibly can. Obviously, Eduardo Paulo is a big miss. He's definitely our best defender, but there we go. So we're looking for Rodrigo to make the difference. We're looking for Leandrinho to lead the line. He's our top scorer so far, three goals in the tournament. I don't, I don't know who's the top scorer in the actual tournament. We'll check that out after the game, hopefully in a good mood. Germany, they are... They're good. Um, they're good. Now, Felix Zudekai is, he's at Barcelona, developed, he's become a very good player. Um, one of these players is sort of tipped by, by Tifo quite a lot. Um, yeah, he is, he is actually, he's definitely very good. Now, obviously, lots of regens who we are very familiar with, including two boys from Liverpool, Vujovic and Ulrich, absolute legends for us, especially Vujovic. Um, but they've also got Ishikawa, they've got Schultz, They've got Amrel. They've they've got some incredibly gifted players. It's going to be very very difficult. I don't. I'm, I'm not sure how the draw system works in this new World Cup, but I don't really get why this is a third round game. Should it should at least be quarter final, right? I don't. I don't think we're really the favourites for this. I, well, maybe it's maybe maybe we are just, but I think it's probably very very even one as far as the boogies are concerned first highlight though is from us marcus antonio the free kick is headed over corner comes in leandrino another great set piece chance that we have not taken 
think it's that kind of fine margin that's going to be making the difference. It's a corner in from Germany and Schultz with a shot which is cleared off the line. It's been a pretty, pretty nervy one. Only highlights have been from set pieces. Nothing from open play from either side. Corte plays it forward to Barantino looking for a ball in. He's found one to Paqueta and Lucas Paqueta, one of our most reliable stars at Liverpool, hits the post. We've got a corner as a result of it. It's cleared by Kai Havertz. And that's going to be the end of the first half. Very, very tense and nervy game for sure. Of course, Germany were the team who nearly knocked our France side out of the World Cup. I think it was the quarterfinals in the in the World Cup four years ago. Um, we really should have lost that game. And I'm, I've said I've ple I'm pleased. I guess we've seen the better of the play. But yeah, we nearly lost to them, didn't we, four years ago? And uh, they well, we managed to fluke our way through, and it's, it's we're coming unstuck against them again this time with Brazil. I think changes need to be made. Pacate is not having a good game. We'll get him off for uh, for Rainier, and I mean Barantine is nervous, but he's the he's got the highest rating of the entire front three. I'm going to take off Leandrino. He's a bit tired, and he's on a 6.5. We'll bring on Thiago Dani. It's a corner for Germany, another corner highlight. Ishikawa puts the ball in. It's an easy claim for Aparicedo, and it looks like it might end up being our highlight. Corte driving forwards. He's found Barantina. He's nervous. He's given the ball away, and Arp is in, and it's a big save. Germany with another set piece, though. A corner going to be swung in from the right-hand side. Finds Arp, and again... Aparicedo makes an incredible save. And considering how good our goalkeepers are, I wasn't sure who the best one was. This guy is the lowest rated, but so far performing incredibly well. Right, I've got one more sub to make in normal time. It looks like we are heading to extra time, and well, we have not been particularly great. Morata apparently is is tired. He's our best. He's our highest rated player, so he's going to stay out there. Um, everyone's looking nervous. Rodrigo's not playing well, but again, do we really take him off? I mean, I guess we kind of do, maybe for Vinicius Jr. Is there a suggested one? Isn't he, we, the, the, my assistant manager is suggesting we leave him out there. I guess that's what we're going to do. We'll demand more, just sort of get him a bit more focused before extra time. And that is looking like what is going to happen. Indeed, that is the case. Vujovic has been withdrawn by the Germans, which is obviously good because we know how dangerous he is. I'm going to go with a bit more aggression. Barantina... Is, is demotivated, but he's on a 7.2. He's going to have to stay out there. He's playing really well. I want to get creative. We could maybe go attacking. I think in games like this at a neutral venue, it's never really a good idea. Um, first half of extra time is gone. It's out of here. Second half, we've still got two subs. We're going to have to use them. Militao's tired, so we'll bring on um, the delightfully named Pingotto. And what's the other change we make? Danny's come on and done nothing. He's 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 very nervous still. I mean, I'm going to put Rodrigo up front. I'm going to embarrass Thiago Danny, but I'm going to take him off. And we're going to bring on Vinicius Junior. He's a you know big experienced man, uh, big game player. It's well, this is this is the last throw of the dice really. Ishikar was in, and that felt slightly inevitable. Takuyo Ishikawa has. Been he's been a he's been a regular player we've seen throughout the save he's been at Man United for a long old while now after leaving Bayern Munich and he has put us out of the World Cup I would think not over just yet Barantina forwards we've done nothing really in the game we don't really deserve to go through very poor performance all things considered Neubel Udakai he's 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 been a rock at the back for the Germans. Julian Brandt off the bench. He's found Albel um, on the right, back in. Chance comes in, and it's it's gone over. Right. I mean, we're, we've got to go attacking, really, haven't we? We're not gonna. I'm I'm not sure. I'm well. I'm gonna lose my job, but I'm not gonna make it out of the stadium alive unless we go attacking for at least these last few minutes. We've got to go for it. Absolutely, just demand more. If we're not. If we're not. We've not created anything really. We've not been in this game at all. Um, I'm gonna. Do we just go? We've got to go very attacking for these final few minutes, but it's all Germany when it comes to the highlights. Albal running into space, Brandt across, it's hit the post. Right, so the time is gone, and what a, what a pathetic way to go out of the tournament. Germany won, Brazil nil, 
And if we want to win the Copa America anytime soon, we're going to have to be doing it with Argentina. Very unlucky draw to get Germany, but we were never in that at all at any point. And we are out of the World Cup in the third round. Our worst performance in an international tournament so far. We've obviously won or made the final of the Euros and the World Cup before this, but not this time. And we will obviously be getting sacked by the Brazilian FA from that one. Do I just resign? Do I just resign before I'm sacked? I mean, the interesting thing here is that this will obviously really help the jobs market quite a lot because if we go and look at this. Obviously, we're going to be sacked. Pochettino is going to be sacked by Argentina. Allegri is going to be sacked by Italy. And Emery is going to be sacked by Spain. So... I mean, obviously, Argentina is the one I'm probably most interested in, but the thing is, that is going to be that potentially some big names will go to these jobs, and then the club side will become available. Not really sure what we could have done differently. I do think that we maybe well, we can't even really blame the defensive injury because it made much of a difference. I just think that some of our attacking players are just not good. Probably shouldn't have played Piquetta from the start. Um, I should have called up Cal Jorge or Cayo or however you say his name. Um, but we didn't, and there we go. We will. I'm not going to resign because they might decide to keep me on. I seriously doubt it. But we'll go to the end of the World Cup. We'll see what happens, see who gets sacked, and then we'll just hang on and see if any club jobs become available. Of course, we still got to hear back from Juventus at some point. Um, hopefully, relatively soon. Right then, final third round ties. Nigeria have knocked out Mexico. I mean, we could we could go to North America instead that's an option but the big news scotland have made it through to the world cup quarter final colin nicholson of the boys have beaten ukraine 2-1 absolutely amazing stuff and so the world cup quarter finals will be turkey versus france romania versus holland germany versus nigeria and oh my goodness me england versus scotland absolutely huge imagine imagine that if that was real life imagine that would be incredible obviously the feeling that if we were still in charge of france we we would be obviously still in this probably maybe i mean the squad is still obviously heavily populated by familiar names as you would expect um a few new guys in here and guys i just never bothered calling up like Tadebo. but um i mean we could have stayed but i wanted to do something different uh, clearly i regret that now all right then they've taken their time about it I wish they'd maybe have taken a little bit more. The World Cup doesn't end for 11 days. But Juventus or Zebra have offered me an interview. I will do this and I'll see you on the other side. Why do you seemingly want to take a step backwards in your career and come here when you could arguably have the pick of many bigger teams? Well, I, they're, they're not, there aren't any, are there? There's no vacancies that are available. So, I mean... I mean, you're putting your own club down, mate. Right, well, I'm not sure that went entirely well, actually, and apparently we're not being tipped for the job, but we'll see what happens. Right, France thrashing Turkey 4-1. They're safely through to the semi-finals. Romania through on penalties again. They've knocked out Holland. They're into the World Cup semi-finals, a real golden generation for the Romanians. And then England making it through 3-1 against Scotland in one of the biggest games in UK history. Germany beating Nigeria 4 one as well, no African team in the semi finals. So that's England, Germany, France, and Romania in the semi final. Who will be playing who? It's France versus England, Romania versus Germany. And well, there'll be no fourth World Cup in a row for France, knocked out by England. So Graham Potter is on for, I mean, is he, would they give him a lordship if he won the World Cup as well? All right, then we have. We've got the Juventus job, the Zebra job, we've got that one, um, but we are luckily now at a point where I can delay it by a week until after the World Cup final and then we can see what happens. I'm not going to take it just straight away. Um, obviously, everyone signed a new contract, so no one wants to come with me apart from Jesus Perez. Not even Danny, not even Danny wants to come with me. He's concerned about Juventus's lower reputation. I mean, to be fair... To be fair, so am I. Um, literally, no one wants to come with me apart, apart from Jesus Perez. We'll bring him along. I mean, I'm. I think, I think I'm not gonna take this. 
I mean, I do, I do, I do think I'm probably gonna say no to the job, but we gotta at least keep the option open for now. And Romania do not make the World Cup final. It will be a repeat of 1966. Germany have beaten Romania 2-1. It will be Germany versus England for World Cup glory. I mean, England. Imagine the ratings for England versus Scotland. The ratings for England versus France, and then now the ratings for England versus Germany. Absolutely insane. And there really, there really are just no words. At least it wasn't me on the receiving end of that. Germany 2, England 2, Germany beat England on penalties after Jadon Sancho forced extra time with a 96th minute penalty in the first place. Um, England took the lead as well. That is heartbreaking. What was the, what, Can we see the penalty shootout results? Yep. There we go, Jaden Sancho, saving England in normal time, gets to then miss the penalty in the penalty shootout. Only one scored, and the Germans win the World Cup on penalties. It's, it's classic scenes, heartbreak for Sir Graham Potter's boys. But the best England have done, of course, uh, in the time. And the thing is that, you know, they're the Euro champions, but that means that... that, that we do still have the potential of of uh, winning the World Cup with England because that still hasn't been done since 1966. Right then, now we've got about three days before Juventus will want to hear from us again. So, um, we've not been sacked by Brazil yet. That is very interesting. That is... I thought we would have been sacked instantly by that. Everyone else has been sacked. Graham Potter, I don't know whether he's been sacked or whether he's left. Has he, did, it, did they sack him for losing a World Cup final on penalties? That seems a bit harsh. I mean, what is he? Okay, so he just quit. He's decided to to resign. He wasn't sacked, right? Fair enough. I mean, the thing is, I want to win the Copa America, but like, do we apply for the England job? I don't know. That I feel like we probably. Is it time? I mean, I, yeah, I do want to win the Copa America. I was kind of expecting that we would be sacked. I don't. Maybe we'll be sacked on the next click. Maybe we get a separate thing for it. Uh, Marcus Juhurst won the World Cup Best Goalkeeper Award. He is just amazing. What a signing that was. He's won the World Cup Best Goalkeeper Award, but he's not in the team of the tournament. That's that's it's brilliant. That, make, that makes so much sense. It's unbelievable. Ulrich is in there. No one else from us. Right. It, it doesn't look like we're going to be sacked as Brazil boss, which is genuinely baffling to me are we not we're still listed as precarious are they have they just has it not triggered it or have they I mean, we've got an f rating we've literally been given an f rating as as manager and they, they're deeply saddened but they haven't sacked me that that's what is this is this a glitch right then it's time Juventus have, have offered us the job again we can't delay it again uh, no one, no, no jobs have gone yet, but I've looked at most of the news articles and pretty much everyone being linked with Spain and Italy and England are people who are already unemployed. So, yeah, I, I don't know how we're still in charge of Brazil. That makes no sense. I mean, I want to win the Copa America, so logically we stay, which is... I mean, the, the England job will come around again, I'm sure. Um, but, yeah, that's annoying. So this is the thing. Do we go to Zebra? Do we go to Juventus? Or do we stay? Because I think that's the only other choice, is, is that we stay again. And I don't want to stay again. I and mean, we could resign, I suppose, and then see see what happens with that. Maybe they'll appoint someone else. But this is the problem now. It's the 18th of July. Time is going away here. The At least the English window closes relatively soon. And... Uh, there's not going to be another opportunity for another year. I was, I cannot believe, even to this point, that Jurgen Klopp has not been sacked. I cannot believe that the guy in charge of Barcelona has not been sacked. He's not won the league for five years. I mean, this is all just moot. We haven't looked at the team at all um, beyond beyond how poor they've been recently. Let, let's just have a look and see what kind of players we're actually going to be working with if we do go. Adam uh, uh, Cockbill. Uh, or Cobill, maybe, is their best player, formerly of Spurs. He is very good. Uh, Cal Jorge, who's not very impressed with me because I didn't take him to the World Cup. 
Uh, we've got Pablo Lopez, who is I'm a decent right winger. We've got two decent right footed wingers. Um, we've got Seiko Keita, another striker slash winger. Uh, Albanaz, also from our Brazil squad, while he didn't play. Delict is 30, so prime of his life, really. Um, he's apparently been trained as a right back more than anything, which is weird. Um, but what was he playing as a centre back? Where are we to go? We've got Fabian Perez. I mean, they've got some pretty okay players. But it feels overall it's just a very, very bang average squad. Have they sold anyone while I've not been here? No. It's just, I really, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It is interesting to maybe get them back up, but I mean, can we see, can we see the old season preview? How, how are we predicted to finish? I've not even, have we been, we have not even been told the budget. We're predicted to finish third. What is the transfer budget? Right. Okay. Brilliant. Zero, 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 zero pounds with with this squad. You you want me to spend zero pounds. We've got a 38-year-old Marc-Andre to Stegen in goal with pace of three. And you want me to spend no money. I mean, I guess that's subject to change potentially, but um, no... I don't, I'm not really feeling that one to be honest. I just, I don't think it's the right one. And it means we're probably going to have to spend another year at Liverpool, which is unfortunate, unless I just ignore the whole constantly being employed thing and we just resign. Maybe we do that, I don't know. I mean, it, we, we might, the stuff might happen with these. Juventus might hire someone else. Um, I don't know. I I don't know. I just that didn't feel particularly like a good idea going there. I mean, we, you know, we'd be fine. I'm not worried about reputation or anything. But I just I don't know. I we, you know we want to win. It just it just it just didn't really it didn't really feel like a particularly smart move. I just I can't believe there's nothing else. But the key thing there really is a transfer budget zero pounds, which I mean we can probably rejig some of the wage budget to get a bit of money but that's that's not really a good sign when I mean they want us to sign high reputation players but they're not giving us any money at all I I just think at this point it's a bit of a backward step it's the kind of thing where you know you'd, you'd maybe go and do it in a few years after we'd been somewhere else but there's nowhere else to go and yeah I don't know I really don't know and I can't even ask you because I'm recording this so far in advance. Unless I don't play this save for another three months or something, then uh, I'll already have decided. But do we stay at Liverpool? Do we go to Juventus? Or do we just resign so we can get through the next season a bit quicker and see what's available next year? We take a sabbatical. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily want to do that, but I, I don't really want to go through another. 60 game season with Liverpool even if even if the end result is we win a bunch of stuff again it's really want to do that but then I don't want to go to to Zebra when this is what they're really offering me so hmm I don't think any other big jobs are going to become available unfortunately I don't think it's going to happen which means that that is our choice and it's a choice I'm going to have to go away and think about. And you're going to have to find out what I pick in a couple of days' time. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe we'll do this one a bit quicker. But, um, yeah, let me know what you would do in this situation. And we'll see if you if you agree with what I end up doing. But, yeah, a conundrum. A conundrum. Subscribe to find out what happens next. I will see you next time where a choice will have been made.